Uh, joining us from Lancaster in the UK is Richard Johnson. He's a lecturer in US politics and international relations at Lancaster University. Richard, I ha one part of me hates the fact that we have these discussions, that we're talking about tweets and talking about Donald Trump's tweets all the time. However, if you look at just the last 24 or 48 hours or the last two years, if you want to put it that way, what we are seeing, the way it's being played out is like nothing we've ever seen before. Well, that's right. And I think when we read Trump's tweets, we have to remember one of his key audiences is he's speaking to his supporters in the language of his supporters. And we can't lose sight of that. And so I think sometimes it's useful, actually, to try and consume some of the more sympathetic Trump press and see how these tweets are being uh, interpreted in those uh, outlets. And, and one of the things that they have been saying is that this is a sign that Trump is, you know, is a breath of fresh air. He is a transactional uh, person. He's a businessman. Money talks. And so when we think of it in that sort of framing, what Trump is doing makes a little more sense from the sort of political perspective of what, he, what he's tweeting out. But how do we take it as gospel, though? If he tweets, as he has in the last couple of days, about cutting aid to Pakistan, cutting aid to the Palestinian Authority, taking Jerusalem off the table, do we take that as definitive U.S. foreign policy? Well, I think that you have to, you have to examine each one on a case-by-case -case basis. On Pakistan, for several months now, the State Department has been uh, issuing uh, un, un, the displeasure with Pakistan uh, Vice President Pret Pence went to Afghanistan last month and suggested that the harder line would be taken against Pakistan in the summer. There was a uh, 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 defense, defense reimbursements were held back from Pakistan. And so in that sense, it's although the, the tone and the form might seem alarming to us and strange and different, and it is different, that there, is, there has been some groundwork that's been paved by others in the administration before these pronouncements come out. Or well, maybe all of this, this may follow up on some of the things you've already said, but maybe all he's saying in public now is the type of stuff that was previously said in private or previously said in you know, back-channel negotiations on foreign policy. Maybe this is actually reality and it's just he's the guy who says it. Well, I think what's happened is that the sort of mores of diplomacy are out the window when it comes to President Trump. Uh, and so some of the niceties and language that, that we would normally associate from the kind of a statesman perspective are, are gone. But there are certainly, Trump is expressing this, this displeasure that uh, administration officials have been trying to communicate, perhaps through back channels. Of, you know, with the Pakistan example, uh, reports are that the administration was unhappy that the United States was unable to interrogate members of the Hikani network who had been involved in the kidnapping of that U.S.-Canadian uh, uh, couple uh, in efforts to find another U.S. citizen who's currently missing in Pakistan. And so these are, in some sense, Trump is, uh, you know, he's putting a, a political stamp on something, you know, that's, that's in, the in the diplomatic sphere has been bubbling away for some time now. Richard Johnson talking at real Donald Trump. Uh, from Lancaster, thank you.